Hi, for this video, I want to show you how to verify a trig identity. And this one is a little bit more complicated than some of the other videos that I have shown examples of. Okay, with this one, I do want to say that there is probably more than one way of getting to the correct solution. Remember, our goal with verifying an identity is to show that one side equals the other side. So sometimes you can get to the same solution in multiple ways. So this is not the only way that can be done. I just went through and found the easiest way for me to solve it. And so what I tend to do is when I look at the problem, I look for the more complicated side to see if I can simplify the more complicated side down into the opposite side. So I'm going to start with the left hand side and I'm going to try to see, can I get this expression to equal sine X cosine X over sine X minus cosine X. So the first thing that I typically do is I try to see if there's any Pythagorean identities, which there's not in this case because we're not dealing with any cosine squareds or sine squareds or tangent squareds. Okay, and then the other thing that I look at is can I rewrite anything in terms of sine and cosine that isn't already written that way? So the first thing that I want to look for is tangent x, I can see that that is not written in terms of sine and cosine. So I would start by rewriting tangent as sine x over cosine x. So like I said, I'm going to start with the left hand side and I'm going to see can I simplify it into the right hand side. All right, so my first step is to replace tangent x with what it's equal to. So I'm going to say that cosine x minus cosine x over 1 minus sine x over cosine x. Okay, now we have what is known as a complex fraction. So over here I have a complex fraction. So what I want to do is simplify this entire fraction to where I don't have a fraction within a fraction. So I want to get rid of the fraction in the denominator. So to do that, what I have to do is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by whatever gets rid of the denominator in the denominator. I know that sounds confusing. So basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to take and I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by cosine x. Okay, so if I multiply both the numerator and denominator by cosine x over cosine x, I'm essentially multiplying by 1. So what I'm going to do is on the top, when I rewrite this cosine x times cosine x ends up giving me cosine squared x over on this one when I distribute it in when I do cosine x times 1 I get cosine x minus on this one when I'm multiplying cosine x times sine x over cosine x these cancel each other out and I'm just left with minus sine x okay so I am getting closer to what I'm my goal here sine x cosine x over sine x minus cosine x okay I'm still going to leave it in this form eventually I will have to switch this around so that it's sine x minus cosine x rather than cosine x minus sine x so now what I want to do is I want to be able to add these fractions together well right now they don't have a common denominator so what I need to do is multiply cosine x by cosine x minus sine x over cosine x minus sine x. And that way I will have a common denominator. And on this side I have cosine squared x over the same thing. I didn't have to change it. All right, so now what we are going to do is I'm going to just write this all as one fraction where I have cosine x minus sine x in the denominator and so I'm going to distribute the cosine in and I'm going to look back at my original problem because remember my goal is to get sine x times cosine x in the numerator okay so when I multiply this in it gives me positive cosine squared x minus sine x cosine x and then remember I have this minus cosine squared x here 
All right, so now if I simplify the numerator, cosine x squared minus cosine x squared cancels out. So I'm left with negative sine x cosine x over cosine x minus sine x. So if I look at my original problem, we're getting very close to having this, okay? The difference that we have is instead of having sine x minus cosine x, we have cosine x minus sine x. So we have to do something to rewrite this expression in the denominator so it's in the same form. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna factor out a negative one from the denominator. So on the top, I still have the negative sine x cosine x. And in the denominator, what I have is I have a negative one times, and I'm gonna write positive sine x first minus cosine x. So I switched the order of these two and I changed the signs by factoring out a negative one. So now if I simplify a negative divided by a negative is a positive sine x cosine x over sine x minus cosine x, which is what we were trying to prove. So we can say, therefore, this is an identity. So some of these will take you a lot longer to be able to get from the original function where you have the first side getting it equal to the second side. And like I said, sometimes you can do this in multiple ways. Some of you may have seen something differently than I did, and that's fine, as long as you can show using the trig identities that one side equals the other side, or that both sides can be simplified down to equaling the same thing. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.